پاکستان کے خلاف بہت سارے محاذ کھلے کچھ ہم نے خود کھولے اور کافی سارے ہمارے خلاف کھولے گئے آج کا محاذ ارشد کے نام آج کا محاذ عمران کے نام آج کا محاذ سمی کے نام آج کا محاذ پاکستانی صحافت کے نام السلام علیکم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں ہوں وجاہد سعید خان تھوڑی ہی دیر میں میں نیو یارک سے جا رہا ہوں جانے سے پہلے یہ ولاگ ریکارڈ کرنا ضروری تھا کیونکہ آج بڑے عرصے بعد جو سننے میں آیا وہ میری فلائٹ سے پہلے شیئر کرنا ضروری تھا ویسے تو میں چاہ رہا تھا کہ آرام سے جا کے جو میری اگلی ڈیسٹینیشن ہے ادھر جا کے کروں بگر جس قسم کی خبریں آئی ہیں میرے اس اس انویسٹیگیشن سے میری اس چھوٹی سی رپورٹ میں آپ دیکھیں گے کہ دے ناٹ ویری گڈ ارشد کے بارے میں ہیز واٹ وی نو ارشد کی شہادت کو اب چھ مہینے سے زیادہ ہو گئے ہیں کیس جو ہے اس کا وہ ڈرائگ آن کیے جا رہا ہے ایس جی آئی ٹی نے باہر ٹریول کرنا تھا مگر ہمیں کچھ اس کے اسٹیٹس کا نہیں پتا ہیز واٹ وی نو اباؤٹ عمران ریاض خان عمران کے بارے میں ہمیں یہ پتا ہے دو ہفتے سے زیادہ ہو گئے ہیں جب عمران کو سیال کوٹ ایئرپورٹ سے اٹھایا گیا تھا اینڈ کورٹ جو ہیں بے بس لگ رہے ہیں جو پولیس ہے اس نے ہاتھ اٹھا لی ہیں اور یہ بھی کہا ہے کہ جو آئی ایس آئی ہے اور جو ایم آئی ہے ملٹری انٹیلیجنس والے وہ کہہ رہے ہیں کہ ہمارے پاس عمران ریاض خان نہیں ہے دو دن قبل اپنا ایک شو کر کے جس شو میں انہوں نے کہا تھا کہ کورٹ لمبے پائے گئے نے اور اپیل کی تھی کہ کورٹوں کو ایک فیصلہ ایک فیصلہ صرف ایک فیصلہ اگر کورٹ سنا دیں ان لوگوں کے خلاف جو قانون کی بے عزتی بے حرمتی کر رہے ہیں اور یہ ایکسٹرا جوڈیشل جو چیزیں حرکتیں کر رہے ہیں شاید چیزیں بہتر ہو جائیں اس اپنے بلاک کے بعد سمی ابراہیم کو بھی اٹھا لیا گیا ہم سب بے بس ہیں اور اس بے بسی میں ہم یا نہ کوٹوں کے پاس جا سکتے ہیں اوبیسلی نہ ایجنسیز کے پاس جا سکتے ہیں نہ تھانے میں جا سکتے ہیں سو وی ڈڈ وی گو ہم ادھر گئے جدھر شاید ہم سے بہتر انفارمیشن ہو آر ایس ایف جو رپورٹرز ود آؤٹ بارڈرز دنیا کی شاید سب سے بڑی جانی مانی واچ ڈاگ ہے جدھر بھی کوئی اگر صحافت کے ساتھ کوئی الٹی سیدھی چیز ہوتی ہے کوئی سپریشن ہوتا ہے قتل ہوتا ہے کوئی ابڈکشن ہوتی ہے کسی صحافی کی تو رپورٹر سائنس فرنٹیئرس کے آر ایس ایف کے انویسٹیگیٹرز ادھر جاتے ہیں جائزہ لیتے ہیں جنہوں نے غلط کام کیا ہے ان کا سراغ نکالتے ہیں وغیرہ ساتھ ساتھ رپورٹ بھی لکھتے ہیں اور یہ جو ایجنسیاں ہیں پوری دنیا کی چاہے وہ آئی ایس آئی کی ایجنسیز ہوں یا کینیا کی ایجنسیز ہوں جدھر ارشد شریف کو شہید کیا گیا ادھر جا کے بات کرتے ہیں دریافت کرتے ہیں رپورٹ لکھتے ہیں انویسٹیگیشن کرتے ہیں ہم نے آر ایس ایف کو فون کیا ہم نے آر ایس ایف سے بات کی کیونکہ آر ایس ایف نے کل ہی میں ایک ایسی اسٹیٹمنٹ نکالی جس سے کم از کم میرے الام جو ہیں وہ بجنے لگ گئے اس اسٹیٹمنٹ میں انہوں نے صاف صاف لکھا کہ کانفیڈینشیل جو سفارتی ذرائع ہیں ان کے مطابق لگ رہا ہے کہ عمران ریاض خان شاید ڈیٹینشن میں ہیز ناٹ ڈن ویل ہیز فیئرڈ بیڈلی ان ڈیٹینشن اور وہ شاید اپنے جو حراست میں وہ شاید فوت بھی ہو گئے ہوں ہم نے آج یہ جو اسپیشل رپورٹ آپ کے لیے تیار کی ہے اس میں ہم نے ڈینیل بیستا جو ہیڈ آف ایشیا پیسیفک ڈیسک ہے آر ایس ایف کا انہوں نے ہم سے خصوصی بات کی ہے کیا ایگزیکٹ چکر ہے بٹ عمران ریاض خان کے بارے میں جو انہوں نے ہمیں موٹا موٹا بتایا وہ کافی ڈسٹربنگ ہے آپ ابھی آگے جا کے ڈیٹیل سنیں گے مگر لب لباب یہ ہے کہ آر ایس ایف کہتا ہے کہ عمران ریاض خان ایجنسیز کی لڑائی کا شکار ہوئے ہیں اور پاکستانی ایجنسیز میں فرق ہے یہ بہت ڈیمنگ قسم کا کلیم ہے مگر یہ آر ایس ایف کا کلیم ہے وہ یہ بھی کہہ رہے ہیں کہ شاید پاکستان میں ایسی ایجنسیز ہیں جو آرمی چیف جنرل 
आसिम मुनीर साहब को सीरियसली नहीं ले रही ये मेरा क्लेम नहीं है ये आरएसएफ दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा जर्नलिज्म वॉच डॉग है जो हर किस्म के जराए से बात करता है हर हर किस्म की सोर्सेज से बात करता है ये उनका क्लेम है अरशद शरीफ के बारे में एविडेंस ये सजेस्ट करती है कि जो कैनियन अथॉरिटीज हैं वो आ, उनकी जो वर्जन है वो बिलीव नहीं की जा सकती कि ये गलती से हुआ है वो कह रहे हैं कि इसमें पाकिस्तानी इंटेलिजेंस एजेंसी के फिंगरप्रिंट्स हैं अरशद शरीफ की शहादत में और लग रहा है कि पाकिस्तानी कनेक्शन डेफिनेटली है और उन्होंने ये भी कहा कि प्रॉबेबली किसी लोअर लेवल पे कैनियन पुलिस को रिश्वत दे के अरशद शरीफ को एग्जीक्यूशन स्टाइल प्रोफेशनल हिट के जरिए मरवाया गया है ये मेरा जायजा नहीं है ये दुनिया के सबसे बड़े जर्नलिज्म वॉच डॉग का जायजा है Uh, महीनों के बाद रिपोर्टिंग करके इन्वेस्टिगेशन करके उन्होंने अरशद के बारे में ये कहा है हफ्तों के बाद रिपोर्टिंग uh, करके इन्वेस्टिगेशन करके उन्होंने इमरान के बारे में ये कहा है अगेन um, इससे पहले के जो हमारे जो अथॉरिटीज uh, हैं वो इस रिपोर्ट को uh, बुरा माने uh, मेरी आपके लिए एक अपील है आपका जो ये तरीकेकार आपके जो तरीके वारदात जो है जो आप सालों से कर, करते आ रहे हैं और परफेक्ट कर रहे हैं इसको बेहतर आप अब करने लग गए हैं पहले तो आप छोटे लेवल पे करते थे कब दूर वजीरस्तान में कर लेते थे या बलोचिस्तान में कर लेते थे अब आप इंटरनेशनली भी ये करने लग गए हैं अकॉर्डिंग टू नॉट मी बट अकॉर्डिंग टू इंटरनेशनल सोर्सेज और अब आप ऑब्वियसली दिन दहाड़े भी ये करने लग गए हैं कोर्ट्स को भी अब डिनाई करने लग गए हैं मुझे पता है कि आप थिक स्किन्ड हैं मैंने आप से बहुत सालों से आपसे बात की है आप कहते हैं कोई नहीं हमारी जो जल्द है वो आर्मर वो टैंक की तरह है कोई गोली उसके अंदर नहीं जा सकती कोई तनकीद हमें नहीं लगती जब तक हम अपना काम करते रहें और पाकिस्तान की जो बुनियाद है उसको संभाल के उसको जकड़ के रखें पाकिस्तान का जो नजरियाती और फिजिकल दोनों जो बॉर्डर हैं उनको प्रोटेक्ट करते रहे तो हमें कुछ नहीं फर्क पड़ता मैं आपकी बात समझ सकता हूं कि आपका क्या मौकफ है मगर आप शायद मेरी बात भी समझने की कोशिश करें ये जो आपकी थिक स्किन है और ये जो आपका नजरियाती और जो दफाई जो आपकी मेंटेलिटी है इसको अब पूरी दुनिया नोटिस करने लग गई है वॉल स्ट्रीट जर्नल जो है जो शायद दुनिया का सबसे इन्फ्लुएंशल अखबार है दुनिया का हर इन्वेस्टर हर लीडर ये अखबार पढ़ता है उसने दो दिन का बल ये स्टोरी उठाई वॉल स्ट्रीट जर्नल वही न्यूज पेपर है जिसमें डैनियल पर्ल काम करता था आ, मुझे उम्मीद है आपको डैनियल पर्ल याद हो ये वही बंदा है जो कराची में मारा गया था आपकी गफलत से जिसके बाद पाकिस्तान की रेपुटेशन 9/11 के बाद और खराब हुई और जो अभी तक डैमेज है जब रेपुटेशन खराब होती है जब तो इंटरनेशनल इन्वेस्टर कॉन्फिडेंस खराब होता है मीशत खराब होती है डिप्लोमेटिक स्टैंडिंग एक मुल्क की खराब होती है आप दिवालिया भी होते हैं और आप बेइज्जत भी होते हैं इसलिए जब आप कोई कश्मीर का मुद्दा उठाते हैं या आप अफगानिस्तान का मुद्दा उठाते हैं या बलोचिस्तान का मुद्दा उठाते हैं तो आप कोई सीरियसली नहीं लेता क्योंकि आप खुद अपने लोगों के साथ जैसी हरकतें करते हैं उसे जब वॉल स्ट्रीट जर्नल कवर करता है या वॉइस ऑफ अमेरिका कवर करता है या कमेटी टू प्रोटेक्ट जर्नलिस्ट कवर करता है या जजीरा कवर करता है तो दुनिया पढ़ रही होती है आपकी जो बैड हैबिट्स हैं वो जब तक लोकली थी तो शायद कुछ लोग उसको नजरअंदाज कर देते थे उस पर पर्दा डाल देते थे मगर आपकी जो बैड हैबिट्स हैं अब वो ग्लोबल हो गई हैं और ये एक शर्मिंदगी का हम सब के लिए एक बायस बन रही है ये जो कॉस्ट है किसी को उठाने की किसी को मारने की किसी को इलेक्ट्रिकल शॉक ट्रीटमेंट देने की जैसे आपने गोहर वजीर को दिया इसके बारे में भी रिपोर्ट छपी है ये जो कॉस्ट है ये खाली वो जर्नलिस्ट या उसकी फैमिली या उसके दोस्त या उसके व्यूअर्स नहीं उठाते ये पूरा मुल्क ये कॉस्ट 
उठाता है जब इसकी ऑब्वियसली एक इकोनॉमिक कॉस्ट है मगर इसकी एक डिप्लोमेटिक कॉस्ट भी है हर चीज इफेक्ट होती है कल जब आप आएंगे और आप क्यों नहीं आएंगे आपको इनविटेशन मिलते हैं आप शायद पेंटेगॉन आए आप शायद लैंगली आए आप शायद व्हाइट हाउस आए आप शायद स्टेट डिपार्टमेंट आए आप शायद टेन डाउनिंग स्ट्रीट पे आए आप शायद फ्रेंच प्रेसिडेंसी में जाएं या जर्मन चांसलरी में जाएं जिधर भी जाएं आप इंशाल्लाह आप हमारे लीडर्स हैं मिलिट्री लीडर्स हैं पॉलिटिकल लीडर्स हैं आपका ये काम है जाके दुनिया को फेस करना दौरा करना तो आपसे ये क्योंकि ये महजब मुआरे हैं इधर जर्नलिज्म अलाउड है इधर एक फ्री प्रेस अलाउड है आप से मैं शर्त लगा के कह सकता हूँ कि आपसे पूछा जाएगा कि आप ये क्यों कर रहे हैं अपने ही लोगों के साथ आप उनकी आज़ादी राय आप एक फ्रीडम ऑफ प्रेस और फ्रीडम ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन को ऐसे क्यों कर रहे हैं मैं शर्त लगा के आप कह सकता हूँ कि आपको एम्बेरस किया जाएगा और आप एम्बेरस होंगे क्योंकि जो ये पॉलिसीज हैं ये एम्बेरसमेंट के अलावा आपके लिए हमें तो कॉस्ट तो हम उठाएंगे बाकी लोग मगर सबसे बड़ी कॉस्ट आप जो उठाएंगे वो आपकी खुद और आपके मुल्क की एम्बेरसमेंट और आपके इदारे इदारे की एम्बेरसमेंट होगी जैसे मरियम औरंगजेब को मेरे कॉलीग चैनल फोर के कॉलीग सिकंदर करमानी ने कुछ दिन पहले एम्बेरस किया अगर आप मुझे इजाजत दें तो आ, मैं ये लिंक भी अपने डिस्क्रिप्शन में लगा देता हूँ और प्ले भी कर लेता हूँ ये आ, आपने जरूर देखा होगा कि इन दोनों के दरमियान आपकी इंफॉर्मेशन मिनिस्टर के दरमियान और एक इंटरनेशनल जर्नलिस्ट के दरमियान क्या हुआ Now your government is responsible. Sir, first of all, good to see you. Bye, and you took me by surprise. Uh, the thing is that name me one journalist who's missing. Imran Riaz Khan. Imran Riaz is a political party uh, 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 spokesperson now. Let's call him a commentator. No, 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 Let's call him a commentator. Please, 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 please. You really, you really have to draw a distinction. You name one journalist who's missing. one journal journalist who's being shot one journalist who's been kidnapped one journalist whose uh, ribs are broken and one journalist who's missing now now you listen to me you have to differentiate between journalists and the journalists who have joined political parties once they have joined political parties they are inciting violence they are spokespersons of that political parties please do please do not mix them with uh, the independent journalists who report and who report who who believe in true journalism but these are the exact things yeah. that for example uh the imran khan and his party said about journalists that were being targeted in his tenure okay, okay. that they were biased and that they were had an agenda against them weren't yeah they? very very good question uh mr imran khan was called media predator and mr shabash sharif under his government the media freedom has improved by 7 points ये जो आप देख सकते हैं देख तो नहीं खैर सुन सकते हैं क्योंकि मैंने वीडियो नहीं लगाया मैंने खाली इनकी आवाज लगाई मरियम औरंगजेब साहिबा की ये एक तो शायद पाकिस्तान में कम ही कोई जर्नलिस्ट हो जिसने इनकी इस तफरीक को इस आर्ग्यूमेंट को कि इमरान रियाज खान एक जर्नलिस्ट नहीं है एक सियासी वर्कर है लिहाजा उसकी बात ना ही की जाए तो बेहतर है क्योंकि वो एक फलानी पार्टी को रिप्रेजेंट करता है ये इस रबिश को इस बकवास को खाली मैं नहीं रद्द करता इस बकवास को पाकिस्तान के तकरीबन सब रिस्पेक्टेबल जर्नलिस्ट ने ऑनलाइन अपने शोज पे ब्लॉग्स पे कॉलम्स में रद्द किया है कंडेम किया है इमरान रियाज खान जो भी हो चाहे वो जमाती हो चाहे वो जियाला हो चाहे वो यूतिया हो जो भी हो इ रेलिवेंट जस्ट द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट फैक्ट इज कि वो पाकिस्तान का एक शहरी है और वो 10-15 दिन से मिसिंग है और आपकी इंफॉर्मेशन मिनिस्टर एक्चुअली बिलीव करती हैं कि उसको अलग बिकॉज वो एक सियासी नजरिया रखता है और शायद बिल्कुल रखता है 
और बहुत सारे जर्नलिस्ट रखते हैं उसके साथ जो हो रहा है वो जायज है ये जो मॉरल इक्वेलेंसी है जो इन्होंने एक और चीज कंपेयर की है कि आरएसएफ की रिपोर्ट को साइट करते हुए कि सात पॉइंट शहबाज शरीफ की हकूमत में इस हकूमत ने गेन किए हैं इमरान खान के जमाने में एक सौ सत्तावन नंबर पर रैंकिंग थी मीडिया फ्रीडम की ये तो खैर फिर भी ज्यादा है मुल्क में दुनिया में पौने दो सौ मुल्क हैं उनमें से आप एक सौ सत्तावन से जब एक सौ पचास पे आ रहे हैं तो आप खुश हो रहे हैं ये इनके लिए खुशी का बायस है चलें कोई बात नहीं अगर मरियम को खुश एक दो दिन मैंने होने दिया मगर फिर यही जो मरियम का मुद्दा है उसको मैं चैलेंज किया और आर एस एफ जिसे मैंने अरशद और इमरान के बारे में बात की इस पे भी मैंने आर एस एफ से सवाल किया कि ये क्या माजरा है ये क्या मामला है एक तरफ अरशद के साथ जो हुआ सो हुआ जो दूसरी तरफ बाकी जो इमरान और बाकी लोगों के साथ जो हो रहा है आम आवाम आम छोटे बड़े हर किस्म के जर्नलिस्ट के साथ ये हो रहा है माजरा क्या है तो उन्होंने बड़ी सिंपली बताया आप खुद ही मुलायजा कीजिए मगर उन्होंने सिंपली बताया कि इसलिए है कि आपके जो नेबर्स हैं वो खुद डिटेरियोरेट कर रहे हैं अफगानिस्तान ईरान इंडिया वगैरह बांग्लादेश ये सब इनकी रेटिंग गिरी हैं तो इसलिए उनकी बनस्बत आपकी रेटिंग बड़ी है इसलिए आपकी रेटिंग नहीं बढ़ी कि आप बहुत जबरदस्त किस्म के आजादी राय को फरोग देने वाले किस्म की आप हकूमत है तो ये मुझे उन्होंने क्लियरली बताया है इस बंदे जिस बंदे ने वो रिपोर्ट लिखी है उस बंदे ने बताया है तो मरियम थैंक्स बट नो थैंक्स कल ऐसा ना हो मरियम कि जब आपके साथ कुछ हो तो हम भी बोलें कि वो इंसान नहीं थी वो पीएमएल नून की एक कारकुन थी तो इतनी तफरीक ना करें आप प्लीज क्योंकि ये बहुत आप हम आपसे एक्सपेक्ट करते हैं आप इंफॉर्मेशन मिनिस्टर हमारी एक माँ की तरह हर जर्नलिस्ट की एक माँ की तरह या एक बाप की तरह होता है या होती है यू आर सपोज टू बी द प्रोटेक्टर द गार्डियन ऑफ द फ्री स्पीच एंड जर्नलिस्ट आपका काम खाली चापड़ूसी नहीं करना शरीफ की जो शायद आपकी प्राइमरी जॉब है आपकी एक्चुअली आईनी तौर पर कानूनी तौर पर आपकी प्राइमरी जॉब इज टू प्रोटेक्ट दिनियन and the freedom of speech of the people of pakistan that is your first and last job just fyi to please itni bhi na tafreeq kare ki kal hum bhi aapko aise taane dein ki ye fulani thi aur fulani nahi thi anyways um mera jo interview hai ab use mulayza kijiye angrezi mein hai lubbe lubab maine aapko bata diya hai agar aapki meri tarah angrezi zara kamzor hai to mazrat ke sath phir se dekh lijiyega comments mein dal dijiyega मगर लुबे लुबाब ये है अगेन कि अरशद शरीफ के केस पे पाकिस्तानी इंटेलिजेंस के फिंगरप्रिंट्स हैं प्रॉब्ली रिश्वत के जरिए ये हुआ है अकॉर्डिंग टू आरएसएफ और इमरान रियाज खान का जो केस है वो इंटेलिजेंस एजेंसीज के अंदर कोई कोई धड़ाड़ पड़ी हुई है अकॉर्डिंग टू आरएसएफ वो ये कह रहे हैं वो ये क्यों कह रहे हैं वो किस क्यों इस रीजन को बिलीव करते हैं ये बहुत बड़े क्लेम है ये मैंने इनसे सवाल किए हैं इन सवाल का जवाब वो खुद देंगे मैं आपको नहीं बताऊंगा मैंने खाली आपको मोटा मोटा बताया बाकी आप देखें क्या होता है थैंक यू और इनशाला अब मैं जिधर अगली जगह जा रहा हूं उधर मिलेंगे खुदा हाफिज सो टू टेक दिस मोमेंट एंड नाउ एक्सपैंडेड टूवर्ड्स व्हाट इज एक्चुअली गोइंग ऑन इन द इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ द मिसिंग जर्नलिस्ट इमरान रियाज खान द स्लेन जर्नलिस्ट अरशद शरीफ द स्टेट ऑफ अफेयर्स Uh, as far as pakistani media and the pakistani press is concerned and even to extrapolate on uh, the larger dangers to south asian media i have with me uh, daniel bastar he is the head of the indo pacific desk for rsf reporters without borders properly pronounced reporters sans frontieres i'm sorry about if i messed up the french daniel but thank you good afternoon bonjour good morning raj bonjour all right nice well, to talk to you Thank you. Thank you. So, uh you're in Paris, I'm in New York. Um I just want to start off with a a, a question which besides the the Imran Khan question, the other Imran Khan question which everybody in this in 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 my country in Pakistan is asking, where is Imran Riaz Khan? What do we know so far? What do we not know so far? 
who has RSF talked to? Uh, you're in touch with some of the security agencies on the ground. What do we know that, uh, what do you know that we don't? Um, well, I'm afraid we don't know much about uh, the fate of Imran Riaz Khan. Um, he's been missing for uh, two weeks now. Um, he's been arrested um, by the police at the airport in Sialkot in northern Punjab, um, in, uh, in eastern Pakistan. Um, he was released pretty quickly by the police, but right after he vanished, um, the police just said that some agencies requested uh, them to, to land a, a police van. And this is the police van that was used to um, kidnap really Imran Riaz Khan. And since then, we have no news. Um, there was um, quite a scandal or let's say uh, something very relevant um, last Monday when um, the judge of the Lahore High Court, so in Punjab, um, asked uh, the police, where is Imran Riaz Khan? Very clearly. And the, the, the um, general inspector of the police uh, of Punjab uh, replied to the judge um, that we don't know. Officially, we've asked all the police around Pakistan and no one is able to say where is Imran Riaz Khan. So the, the, the problem clearly um, is related to these agencies. It's a euphemism that the, the police inspector used. Um, from our knowledge, um, it makes no doubt that Imran Riaz Khan has been abducted by some intelligence agency in Pakistan. Which agency? This is um, where the mystery uh, remains because the Lahore High Court um, also asked some, um, um, some, um, uh, some member of, of the intelligence services, um, where are the whereabouts of Imran Riaz Khan? And this person said that they don't know either. So um, apparently um, there is also some kind of turmoil inside the, the military in Pakistan, inside the, the, the intelligence agencies. Um, and I think um, Imran Riaz Khan is some kind of collateral victim of this um, this fight inside the, the 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 intelligence agencies. So so stop right there. That's an interesting assessment there towards the end, Daniel. Uh, a collateral victim of the fight inside the intelligence agencies. Now, from what I understand, there are multiple intelligence agencies. The, there's the two big ones in the military, the military intelligence and the inter-services intelligence. Mm -hmm. But then there's from what I understand, there's, there's a couple of dozen more. There's field intelligence, there's police intelligence, there's intelligence bureau, that's the CIA, the CID, it, it keeps on going. Even the Frontier Corps uh, has its own paramilitary, it's a paramilitary organization, has its own intel sources. We're, we don't want to bore people with that. What's interesting is your assessment. When you say that there is, he's the collateral victim of the, intel, the fight between intelligence agencies, what do you mean by that? Um, well, it's um, all this is very secret, is very secretive. So it's very difficult to know what kind of fight is is uh, going on inside the, the military intelligence. But the chief of the army staff has um, has changed um, a couple of months ago, and um, according to the information we have, um, the current chief of army staff is not. Um, uh, recognized by everybody within the establishment, what we call the establishment. You know, there is in Pakistan, there is what we call the deep state. It has nothing to do with what with how the the deep state is understood in the US. It's totally different. Um, but it's some kind of nexus of influence um, that has to, to deal with with the military, with the, the highest level within the military and the secret services. Um, and so uh, clearly the military don't want Imran Khan, the, the, the former prime minister, to run um, in the coming elections. And um, Imran Riaz was clearly associated with Bol News, which is, um, which is um, uh, an open support of, of uh, former prime minister Imran Khan. And this is why it has to be, that's why I use the term collateral victim, um, because he 
um, he can be seen as a scapegoat to uh, intimidate um, journalists uh, in Pakistan and mostly pro Imran Khan journalists. Right, right. But um, the bit about the um, fight between intelligence agencies and some of these agencies, or rather some elements of these agencies not really recognizing the chief of army staff, goes very much against the larger narrative that the military will have people believe that the military is united, that the military mm -hmm. is not interested in politics, that the military is for democracy, um, etc. I see you smile. I'm assuming that is an ironic uh, grimace, rather. Uh, what do you make of that claim, by the um, way? Well, um, the, the, the military is often described as a puppet master in Pakistan. Um, the, this description is might be a bit um, excessive, but I think there is some truth in it. Um, the, the military is said to, let's say, um, have a very strong influence over the civil government. And um, I have talked to some members of the of the current government who told me clearly that um, uh, they have a very limited power over some very um, strong security related issues. Um, so even the some people in, inside the civil government um, would acknowledge the fact that their power is clearly limited by the military. So um, it's. This is not the way uh, the rule of law should work. You know, you have an elected government and the military is supposed to follow the government. In Pakistan, it's a bit different. You still have, it's still um, an elective democracy, an elective regime. Um, but we saw in the US with Donald Trump, in, uh, in UK with the Brexit, that elections can be manipulated. And, and we fear that the, the, the political life in Pakistan is often manipulated by, by the puppet masters um, from the military. Right. So uh, to wrap up the latest on Imran Riaz Khan, uh, two weeks ago he's picked up. Nobody knows where he is. Everybody's denying um, that mm -hmm. they have uh, knowledge of where he is agencies the euphemism for 20 something military intelligence or civil intelligence agencies could have been any one of them but you're saying that he is probably on the military side of the equation and there is friction between the military intelligence apparatus and the chief's office the army chief's office exactly yeah 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 that's uh, the i think that's the most probable hypothesis to explain why Imran Riaz Khan is missing. And why he's not being produced despite uh, perpetual orders and investigations by the courts of law. Exactly. Right. Moving on to the uh, puppet masters um, and their work um, or lack thereof. Uh, there have been allegations, there have been investigations, there have been reports, insinuations, implications about the military intelligence, the same involvement uh, of the same people uh, in a different case. Uh, Arshad Sharif, now almost seven months uh, after the fact uh, of his killing um, in Africa, uh, the, that case has also been dragged on in the Pakistani courts. Police officers who investigated it have been uh, suspended. Uh, uh, military intelligence of, uh, officers named in the report are still uh, working in those same ranks and designations. Uh, what do you know, Daniel, that we don't about that drastic, that tragic case? Um, it's very difficult uh, to, for the while to point out uh, to some um, possible culprits in the murder of Akshat Sharif in Kenya. But we have sent a team to Kenya, where Arshad Sharif was murdered last October, to, to make to just to, to um, collect elements to meet the, um, the person where Ashad Sharif was staying, um, to meet uh, representatives of the Kenyan police. And what is clear is that the elements given by the Kenyan police are not acceptable, clearly. Um, um, many, we spoke to many journalists in Kenya who don't buy the version of the, of the Kenyan police, clearly. It's, it's not possible. All the elements they, they gave are not credible, clearly not. So there is um, some, uh, we believe, 
there is clearly some Pakistani involvement in his murder. Um, what kind of involvement? This is um, still a mystery for the world. Um, we are conducting our investigation in Pakistan, in the uh, United Arab Emirates, and and in Kenya to uh, to recall all that all the the the, the the, the, all what Arshad Sharif did before he was killed. Um, and what is um, very worrying is that, okay, um, that was Arshad Sharif's murder was really a shock in Pakistan. Um, in I mean, within um, the journalist community, but also within the government, um, everybody was in, uh, in shock. Um, and many people wouldn't believe what really happened to Arshad Sharif. Um, uh, the, the problem is that very soon, um, Pakistani authorities um, uh, launched a joint investigation team to, uh, to do their own research and their own investigation, including in Kenya, in Nairobi. Um, but the problem is that uh, part of this uh, investigation team um, is um, is made by the inter-services intelligence, which are um, the possible agency responsible for his murder. So um, that's a very big problem of independence for this investigation team. Um, so we believe that it is the role of civil society in Pakistan and in the world, including us at RSF, to do our own investigation and to bring this to, to the world and to Pakistani um, justice system and, and citizens, of course. Right. The uh, version of a report that I have read, after which that report has effectively disappeared and the people, the police officers who uh, drafted that report have been suspended from active duty, the report goes something like this, Daniel. And I think I'm assuming you've heard it too, but I want your take on it that Rashid Sharif uh, was uh, pushed out uh, uh, through the pressure of multiple cases against him in Pakistan, went into hiding in Peshawar. Then, um, after Peshawar, he was pushed out with the help of the Peshawar uh, military corps over there, the, uh, the Peshawar uh, corps, the 11 corps. Uh, he was pushed out of Peshawar to Dubai. He was in touch with a military officer in Dubai who set him up, put him up. It was the same military officer who then, uh, well, sort of pushed him out and said, your time's running out, there's people mm -hmm. after you, and here you go. He then connected Ashad to people with, connected to the uh, African apparatus there, uh, as well as the ARY television network, who may have been, yes. who may have been um, mediators in connecting Ashad to uh, the contact in Africa. The contact in Africa himself is a shady character, uh, has been running a hunting lodge of sorts for years, um, uh, some over-the-counter stuff, some under-the-table stuff, and then uh, the rest is uh, the rest is history. In a, in effect, the bottom line is from one of the officers I talked to. He said Arshad Sharif was cornered into a situation where he couldn't escape out of. He was cornered and then hunted down. Um, this is, of course, from an unnamed police official involved uh, in the proceedings. What's your take on that? Um, well, it's very difficult to have a take on this, um, given the fact that the investigation is still going on, and all this has to be taken with, with much care. Um, but um, I think this version is the most probable, that he's been cornered. Um, and to be totally honest, um, it's not the first time that uh, journalists, Pakistani journalists living abroad are subject to intimidation, um, violence, murder. We had the case um, of uh, this uh, journalist from Baluchistan, um, Sajid Hussein, who was, whose body was found in a river in Sweden um, mm -hmm. three years ago. Um, we are not happy with the version of the Swedish police who said that it's not a murder, it's not an accident, but um, Sajid Hussein was clearly not suicidal. I spoke to his, um, to his uh, partner just before, uh, well, um, who was in touch with him just before he disappeared, 
and he was clearly not suicidal. So um, there is a big mystery around this death. Um, here in Paris, we have one Pakistani journalist, Taha Siddiqui, who, um, who escaped uh, a kidnapping uh, four years ago in, in Islamabad and uh, and managed to to flee Pakistan. And okay, we know I, I'm clearly I'm closely in touch with him, and um, and we have uh, regular reports that the 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 the, the, the Pakistani intelligence is um, let's say monitoring his activity. Um, we have the case of a Pakistani blogger. Yes, please. In Paris. In, in Paris. Paris. And, but even if you, I don't know if you know this uh, Pakistani blogger, Ahmed Wakas Goraya, who is based in the Netherlands, and he's been attacked uh, just in front of his place in Rotterdam, in the Netherlands. And, uh, and the modus operandi that he described is clearly that of the, of the, the intelligence, the Pakistani intelligence. People were talking with a strong Urdu accent, so um, it, there was no... Um, um, no mystery about who was the the the, the, the authors of this um, of this violence. Um, so there is a nexus of of um, of um, indications that tend to prove that okay, Pakistan intelligence abroad is very active against against Pakistani nationals, um, or either journalists or or bloggers. But Daniel, to that point, Asha Sharif's. Uh... Assassination, if I might, if I may call it that, um, is still stands out because of the intricate uh, uh, operational circumstances. You have a special elite unit of the local police. You have a man who runs a very very shady hunting lodge where mm -hmm. special forces operators from all over Africa come in to wine and dine. You've got the the uh, 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 one of Pakistan's biggest TV networks. Uh, and its managers involved. You've got uh, uh, a man who could have been army chief, uh, the former lieutenant general uh, and the DG of the ISI, General Faz, uh, involved. Um, this is this reads like a like a John Le Carre novel. It's not. It's sad. It's 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 real. It's 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 tragic. Um, still, I would like to know, considering you have been on the ground in Kenya, I haven't. Um, what? version of the Kenyan police when you said it's difficult to believe um, what version of the Kenyan police do you not buy and does this mean that there is cross-continental collusion between Pakistani intelligence and the Kenyan security services because clearly the Pakistanis didn't pull this off on their own even if they did they had support from the inside in Kenya what do you make of that nexus um, well, from the information we gathered, um, I don't think there is a link between uh, Pakistani intelligence and Kenyan intelligence. I think um, there is some bribe involved. That the top, um, the top of the of the police or the the security forces in Kenya are not necessarily involved. Uh, so we think that there has been some agreement at the lower level. Of the the the, the Kenyan uh, um, security forces, um, what is not acceptable when I said that the the results of the um, Kenyan investigation um, are are not uh, are not acceptable is the fact that they they had two versions. The first version said that he got um, um, killed by some policeman who shot at him without trying to. Um, to, to kill him or um, that, that it was uh, an accident. The problem is that you cannot, um, well, he was, Arshad Sharif was shot one bullet in the head and one bullet in the chest. It cannot be an accident. Uh, and it was like some, um, not some long range, some very short range. So um, it cannot execution be Execution style. Exactly, execution style. Um, two bullets, very clean, professional stuff. So um, it cannot be some uh, kind of hit and run or some kind of um, police who, uh, who, um, who, who just made some mistake. Um, this is not possible. So, um, and that's how far the, 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 Kenyan, the, the Kenyan police went. So it's not very far away. Um, so, and, and clearly there are some bribes involved um, and that's, one side of the investigation that, that needs to be done well. Clearly, as I said, the the the, um, the top of the Kenyan uh, security forces, I don't think they are involved. 
So we, 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 I still believe that we can work with them um, to try and, and see what, what, it, what actually happened. Um, but it's, uh, it's very sensitive because we don't know how, um, at what, uh, until what level some people within the Kenyan security forces are involved. So the, I think the, still the investigation is still going on and there are many things that we need to, to discover. So Daniel, moving towards the bigger picture, I mean, you've been covering this region for a decade and a half. I've been reading your reports for years and I've been wanting to meet you, talk to you for so long. You've helped so many journalists in Pakistan and the region. You've saved so many lives. I must thank you for all the help that RSF and you particularly have done. Your reports are fantastic. They make an impact. They provide some sort of cover. But the larger question is, have you seen that the ISI um, has changed? The Pakistani military intelligence apparatus has changed over your 15 years of covering the region. Have you seen this sort of uh, tenacity to go after journalists abroad if they pose a threat as well? Um, I am uh, quite shocked uh, that the tentacles, if, if one can call it that, of the intelligence apparatus are now truly global. Of course, I, growing up in Pakistan, started my career there, um, one was used to the local uh, intimidation tactics, techniques, and even the violence. But this is going global now. And clearly, RSF thinks you're alleging that there's, there's Pakistani intelligence fingerprints behind uh, international hits. And uh, um, what, do you, what do you make of that? Where's that trend going? Um, I well, I've um, seen this trend developing for the last five years, more or less, four to five years. It's quite new. Um, if we look at the bigger picture, it's it's quite new. Um, even during the rule of uh, General Pervez Musharraf, who was clearly the military uh, as a prime minister, um, <clears throat> there wasn't such um, um, harassment of journalists or bloggers abroad. Um, but what we must see, how, well, um, this can be understood as a way to control the, the narrative um, apart from traditional media. Until, um, let's say, the mid-2010, uh, more or less, let's say, yeah, um, uh, the, the habit of the, the military was to control mainstream media. Some, you know, some topics are not are taboo. Journalists know that they cannot tackle this or that problem because their chief editor would not agree because his owner, the owner of the media, would not agree because the owner uh, has pressure from some forces um, that are obviously um, belonging to, to the um, what I call the deep state, the, the military establishment, um, as we can call it. Um, but soon, uh, journalists uh, started to go online to publish uh, what they couldn't publish in traditional media or what they couldn't uh, broadcast in traditional TV. Uh, this is why um, some people, exactly like Imran Riaz Khan, started to their YouTube channel, which has like millions of viewers. Um, this has become a um, um, very powerful ways to communicate um, with sometimes some uh, public interest, some information, sometimes some information that is not really verified. So we have to be very careful with that. But the military saw that as, um, as a way to lose their, their power over the narrative. And so they started, this is why um, the PK was created. Um, the, and, um, uh, and the, the military really started to, to try and control the flow of information online. Uh, and they realized that many Pakistani journalists living abroad were actually um, free to tackle this subject that their colleagues couldn't tackle within Pakistan in traditional media. And I think that's why they are, we, we, are, we are witnessing this trend of journalists abroad who are being harassed uh, even outside Pakistan uh, because of their um, their um, um, their use of free speech regarding taboo questions in Pakistan. 
I know we're running out of time and I want to um, uh, come back to you uh, hopefully in the future and talk about um, the larger uh, South Asian media um, concept as well. We have seen uh, with the return of the Taliban, media effectively be snuffed out in Afghanistan. We have seen uh, Narendra Modi's uh, muscular nationalism snuff out independent media in India. We've seen uh, uh, the Bangladeshi regime also uh, try to do its best to snuff out uh, the brave uh, Bengali media. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, want to reserve that for a later time. But coming back and keeping it in Pakistan, Daniel, considering you've been covering the region for so long, where do you see the trend going as far as media freedom is concerned, the military's involvement is concerned, and what can regular journalists do, either those who are in Pakistan uh, or those like me who are out of the country? What are lessons learned, precautions that can be taken? Um, well, this is a paradoxical situation. Um, you know, at the very foundation of Pakistan, um, the founding father, Ali Jinnah, was a strong supporter of press freedom. He really put press freedom as the one of the main, of, of, as the fourth pillar of democracy, of Pakistan democracy. Um, and there is still an, um, a legacy on that. Um, Pakistani media, uh, I've, been work I've been working in China, uh, I've been following many countries in Asia, um, and I must say that the media in Pakistan is still very dynamic. Thank very, you. I will uh, take that as a great compliment. <laughs> but um, the media in Pakistan has to deal with some forces, and it leads us to the, the foundation of Pakistan as well, the, the military uh, always had a very, very strong uh, footprint on political life and social life in Pakistan. Um, and Pakistani journalists um, who are working with mainstream media has have to deal with uh, some uh, taboo questions. Um, they know that there are some issues that they cannot um, uh, address. Um, and it can be like the censorship can be very strong and very um, brutal. I, I remember that uh, a few years ago, um, the, let's say the um, what we call the the reference newspaper in Pakistan, which is Dawn newspaper, um, was um, forbidden. Its dis distribution was forbidden in in some regions uh, because the the trucks who would uh, deliver the newspapers were just blocked by some army um, uh, barrages, uh, so that the people could not read the newspaper. And that's how censorship works uh, in Pakistan, just very uh, um, uh, brutally like that. The, 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 the newspaper who is supposed to be delivered is just blocked at a road. Um, and it says, I think it says a lot about the situation of, of censorship and self-censorship in Pakistan. And another issue, for instance, is the, the fact that many um, media depend on uh, public adv advertising and um, and some um, some either government or rather military people told um, newspaper owners that if they want to survive, thanks to public adv advertisement, they have to get rid of this kind of news, this kind of news, this kind of news. Um, so that's that's how um, that's how the the trend work. Uh, Pakistan is now ranked 150 out of uh, 180 countries in um, in uh, RSF's World Press Freedom Index. It's um, the position is a bit better than last year, but it's more related to the fact that uh, neighboring countries um, had a, a, a worse situation. Yeah, I was so, going to say, uh, how did Pakistan like end up killing, for example, Arshad Sharif, and still get? Um, to you know, gain in its ratings, but you're saying it's related to to the fact that the countries um, who are either 151st or um, just uh, countries right. who are very close in in the in the index um, had a, a, a worse rate, so that automatically the rate of Pakistan um, was better. But the score, like we based all this on a score, and the score is not better than last year. So that's why uh, the ranking has changed a little but not so much. Daniel Basta, 
the head of the Indo-Pacific desk at RSF. You do really important, critical work, Daniel. I really appreciate it. We have less than a minute left, but I must uh, employ you to come back on, uh, on this channel. Keep us posted with the latest that you have. Uh, you do good, important, critical work. Um, millions of people in Pakistan are depending on media freedom so that they can make wiser decisions in their everyday lives and the political lives as citizens. Uh, it's really important, the work you do, and thank you for coming on. We really appreciate your time. Stay safe. Uh, keep your helmet on, as they say in the trenches. I hope to see you in Paris at some point. With such pleasure. Take care. Have a good one. Thank you.